girlfriend. We gotta go help Miss Belle. Are you ready? Come on, Nosy Rosie. Fellas, you gonna help too? Come on, let's go, guys. Ginger, were you taking a nap, sister? An afternoon nap? Oh my goodness. Honey, you ready for dinner? You, are you girlfriend? Oh my goodness, let's go, let's go, let's go. So hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. We wanted to give you an update on Miss Bell. We are doing better. We're still sick, right? We're in the woods, but we're better. So we're gonna go through all the situation with her. I'm about to wash her udder and I'm gonna spray it and put some just udder balm on it. And that's all we are required to do today. She is, now this morning, she had a really good breakfast. Ate really good. So we're not pushing her because this is actually the first day that she actually has really eaten much of anything in a week. So obviously if you've been sick and you're trying to get your appetite back um, and you're trying to eat again, obviously it's a slow process. This is going to be a slow process, but we're gonna give it our best shot. Okay, so as you may know, she fell sick last week. We weren't sure what was going on. Long story short, fast forward. I discovered that the issue was most likely mastitis. Did a video on that a couple of days ago. Here's another thing that you need to know. Um, basically, she really fell ill right before Thanksgiving. So see, she's getting around, she's getting around, she's doing her thing. Um, she never was fully down, but she. the first thing that I noticed was that she was slow, and she wasn't eating. Now, the thing that you need to know, which I've already told you, is Miss Bell has not freshened, had a calf, she's not in milk, she's not being milked, and she still got mastitis. We think the most likely scenario is she kicked her teat, and uh, you know, like a cow, well, they lay in the mud, they lay in everything. So, unfortunately, this is part of the situation with all cattle. You can still get mastitis, whether they, you know, whether they're in milk or not, just like a woman or any other uh, mammal, they can possibly get a breast infection, tissue infection, regardless of what's going on. So, the sticky part about this was that we realized we had a problem the day before Thanksgiving. So I started treating her with penicillin. Uh, was very, very aggressive with penicillin, took her temperature, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I called a vet on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving, and he said at, he was guiding me on what to do. Very, We are very pleased with this vet. It's a new vet for us, and he was excellent. So you have to get somebody out to your house, okay? You gotta find, vets are few and far between these days. Those that travel are even few and far between her. <laughs> Is that a word, James? He's, <laughs> um, so, we were just fortunate to have him guide us. So we did everything that he said over the weekend. I got oxytetracycline. Um, we took her temperature. We kept trying to, you know, see if she would eat. She was drinking. Anyway, so he showed up Monday. I called him on Sunday afternoon. So I'm trying to give you some background here so you know, just so you remember this. So if you run into something like this, maybe something I'm telling you will help you with your cow or goat particularly. So we really hit on the fact that she's got mastitis on Saturday. I gotta remember. And we went and we got um, tomorrow, which is a, it's an antibiotic. Honey, they always wanna see you. They always wanna see you. <laughs> so we went and got, we, we chased it down. We, we got, um, we chased it down. We got the tomorrow uh, antibiotic to put into her teeth. I showed you that in the video. Long story short, the, um, the vet came yesterday. We got her into the stanchion. Uh, he said, for, I got to say this because it, ma it made my day. He said, your farm is fabulous. He was so complimentary. I, you know, I felt like somebody was coming to judge my house and test my ca homemade cake or something, you know, but he was like, this is awesome. And I will tell you first things first, he absolutely said, had we not been doing with her 
everything that we did, particularly the penicillin, prior to him coming, quote, your cow would be dead. So if you've never milked a cow, and she's gonna look a little rough, y'all, she means she's sick, okay? If you've never, um, here's the thing. Yeah, mama. Here's the thing, cows have an udder, okay? Goats have an udder, okay? She does not want you looking at her udder. But a cow has four teats. So they have four quarters, one, two, three, four. So when you milk a cow, you have to milk, or she has to be milked out, four teats. A goat only has two. That's one of the reasons why a lot of people like to have goats, not just because of the size, but because you're only dealing with uh, two teats as opposed to four. Excuse me, Fritz. Excuse me, Fritz. I'm trying to film washing the teat here and you're interrupting the moment and look who you brought with you, nosy Rosie. Okay, so all I'm gonna be doing today, don't hit me in the face like you did a long time ago. All I'm gonna be doing is trying to wash her udder. Just try to clean it up. That's what the vet told us to do. This is really warm water that she can't, they can't see. Let me bring the phone down. It's hard to film, y'all. We're trying to work fast with a cow. And no, I don't have a trifle. Will that do it? So I'm just gonna wash, okay? Just gonna wash really warm, soapy water. Betadine also is good. Is that for good mama? Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I'm not gonna bother you. It's gonna be light and easy. You can see, I don't know if you can see that, this side is really swollen, the front left quarter. The other teats, no problem, no issue at all. Um, we, did her we did take her temperature yesterday. She had a slight temperature. He was surprised her temperature was as low as it was. He was like, that's excellent. Uh, he checked her mouth, checked everything. Uh, he did check her internally. There's some mud right here. And, um, there's no issues internally. He said she is clean as a whistle, good, good, good to go, no problems. Teeth are good, and said she's a very well-maintained cow, but these things happen. He also said to us, I don't know if you can hear me, he asked what was our goal, and uh, I said, what do you mean? He's like, well, are you, gonna, are you gonna breed her again? Do you want calf, do you want milk? I said, I want her to live. So what that ended up doing is causing us to choose different medications. So basically, she can never be milked again by me. If she, if she is bred, if she takes, um, and if she calves and freshens, it will only be for the calf. She will most likely lose this quarter. We expect that. We're watching it throughout the week. Uh, we have to monitor her through Friday to see if he's coming back. If this needs to be lanced, will it split? Will the, t will the actual uh, teat fall off? These things are yet to be seen. So what I have to do for the next several days is every day, I'm just gonna wash her, uh, you know, dry it. I'm gonna spray some fight back on it. And then I'm going to just put like utter bomb. Just keep it clean as possible. Keep it moist. You you can't milk this. Uh, we're, it's he said it would be worse for her. So we're letting it do its thing. Now all the medications that we gave her yesterday um, basically left her for no human consumption. I'm not going to. I know some of you suggested taking her to slaughter. I can't do that. You know, I'm just not even gonna get in that discussion. That's not something we want to do with this cow. And the vet was asked that question. She's loving this, isn't she? And I said, this cow is family and we wanna take care of her. If she's in retirement, which we expect, then that's okay. We're gonna take care of her. And he said, okay. So I went with the strongest medications I could. If she does get bred because we bring a bull onto the property, he said it would, it would be no problem, like I said before, for her to uh, be bred and to calf and to freshen. Even with three teats, she would do a great job. But we haven't made that decision. 
Uh, we are not there. We're just, uh, we're just trying to get her through the week. Okay, I want you to see this. Obviously, you know what this is. She's urinating. The color that you're seeing is from the B-complex. She does not have any kidney or liver issues. So she's been getting B-complex shots. So that is why you see the urine when it's coming out. It's basically the same exact color as the B-complex. So he saw that and verified that yesterday. So we're all good there. Next, what I'm gonna do is just put some Utter Balm. All we're trying to do at this point is to keep it lubricated. I know you can't see guys very well. Just trying to keep it soft, clean, because you are seeing that, like that right there, that's starting to flake and slough off. So this is what we're doing. Just, and she's loving it. It feels so good, doesn't it, mama? I know, you're such a good mama. Mish Bale. Hi, mama. You did good, mama. You did good, mama. So basically what we're doing is we're just working with her throughout the week. The difference from two days ago to today is amazing. Like I said, tomorrow, which is Wednesday, I will be giving her the tomorrow insert like you saw in my last video a couple days ago. I'll be doing that tomorrow and I will be doing that on Friday. I'm also, if it's not raining too hard one day this week, I'm gonna go ahead and give her a, a drench of Cydectin. I'm not gonna do Ivermectin. I'm gonna do Cydectin this time because it's a good time to do that. The other cows won't get anything till February. So, and the vet looked at everything all around. So this is what's going on. It's been very busy. So this is Miss Levy. She's eating Belle's dinner because Belle's not having it right now. We're not pushing that. She knows what she needs. Uh, we also got the keto gel. Miss Belle got the keto gel yesterday. She got keto gel, a B complex, oxytetracycline. Um, she was checked all over. She got another medication, but the choice was exceed or the other, which was uh, a, a little bit stronger. And basically he said, you know, like I said, we're gonna go with that if that's what you want. And that's what I chose. So Miss Bell is here to stay. She's our love muffin, like all of our critters. And uh, when we get to the point of breeding um, and having more calves, this mama and her calf, this cookie butter, they're gonna be our milkers. Hey, where are you going? This is, that's good. Up until this morning, this cow has not been this far up in the pasture uh, for almost a week. She stayed down where we were, where you saw us washing her. So she's coming up to check things out, maybe nibble a little hay. She may be checking on cookie butter. So, oh, oh, maybe we'll get some fresh hay. So clearly, we didn't want grain, Dad. We wanted fresh hay. Cookie, here you are again, knocking things around. Miss Bell, I'm gonna bring this over to the side of you, honey. Okay, that's where I put the hay for you, right there in this low thing. Yep, keep doing it, girl. Keep doing it. So let me tell you something, guys. When you have animals, you know this. I'm, I'm just, this is for the new people, and it's not to, it sounds pretty simple, stupid, but when you have, hay and you're unhooking all your hay bales to feed all your critters make sure you're getting that twine off the hay bales whether it's the big round bells whether it's the little square bells like we've got we're getting some more actually we have some we've already paid for we're gonna get some more soon guys holding it for us um you don't want the cow or the goat to consume this i know a woman who is a great milkmaid and they put the uh dairy cow out to pasture and somebody came in and fed the cow a whole hay bale and they didn't take the twine off and they found her gone if you will and they had a necropsy done on her and they found out that this was the cause so be very careful with all twine around your critters one more tip guys just as a reminder i know i've done a, a, a recent video on this make sure you're feeding your barn cats basic feed this is just basic kibble cat food <laughs> Make sure you're doing that, and please spay and neuter them as well. Please spay and neuter your barn cats. Hey, honey. Hi, honey. There you are. 
All right, guys, we appreciate you watching. I hope we got some clear footage on this this evening. She's eating, she wants hay. So if she's gonna eat hay, that's fine. As long as she's eating and drinking, getting around and slowly improving. We could be in this, as the vet said, he said you could be in the trenches with this for easily 30 days. So it's one day at a time. Hopefully we will keep progressing. We will certainly keep you posted. We appreciate you watching. We appreciate your support. And uh, I know when, when your babies get sick, human babies, cow babies, it don't matter. They're still your babies. Do the very best and do not wait to treat your animals. The vet told me yesterday that what's coming in 2023 with the, um, the hold off, if you will, in terms of uh, the pulling from the antibiotics off the shelf, you have to do over the counter prescription. He said it, it's gonna be a bona fide mess, y'all, okay? It's gonna be a bona fide mess. He was not for it. He was, uh, was uh, a little upset about it. He said, "Who? I, I you hear that thunder. He said, frankly, I don't have time for that. He said, I'll make time, but I don't have time. So he strongly suggested, like I said in my video a day before yesterday, he said, you need to establish a very good homestead farm vet relationship so that they can help see you through. And he also said, don't panic, but you better be prepared. Guys, we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe, and share. <laughs> There goes Fritz running across the field. Guys, we'll see you on the next video.